This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Lenovo ThinkPad P1 Generation 2. We reviewed the first generation, and we've also re reviewed its almost identical twin, the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme second gen. In fact, they shared the same chassis. The difference here with the P1 being in the mobile workstation line is you have NVIDIA Quadro graphics instead of GeForce graphics, and you have the option of getting an Intel Xeon CPU for those of you who need it. Why get a Xeon CPU? Typically for the optional error correcting memory, so you really, really need to avoid crashes for mission critical work that you're doing. Anyway, it's extremely thin and light. I mean, it starts under four pounds. It's kind of crazy. I'm gonna look at it now. So the laptop starts around $1,340 right now. That gets you a core i5, eight gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD, and the lower end of the full HD display option. There's a less bright 300 nit. And you can go up to about $2,000 and it starts getting kind of interesting and nice. Then you get a core i7, and that's the vPro version of the core i7, 16 gigs of RAM, a 512 gig SSD, and the better full HD display, the one that's 500 nit, that's HDR rated um, with Dolby Vision on board. So that's it's looking kind of nice. And then you get Quadro T2000 graphics in it. So this is available with Quadro T1000 and T2000 graphics. The very base model has only Intel UHD 630 graphics inside. Anyway, Quadro graphics are for those who are doing typically CAD and modeling work, uh, medical computation and simulation, that sort of stuff. And the, the drivers are more stable and they're more optimized for that kind of work. So that's why you would choose the P1 over the X1 Extreme if you need that sort of thing, besides the Intel Xeon option. You can get it with that Core i5 with two different Core i7s, like I said, with a Core i9, which is the 8 core, or the Intel Xeon, which is the E2276M, and that is a 6 core CPU, so really not as powerful as getting a Core i9. But you have options here. It's 15.6 inches and it's available also with a 4K OLED display, which is the one that we have yummy, yummy. What I really like about this one actually is versus the X1 Extreme is this one is 4K OLED and it is touch, but it's matte, which is a beautiful thing to behold. And none of the reflections or that kind of glass over glass look that you see with the glossy display option that's say on the ThinkPad X1 Extreme big selling point for me. They claim 400 nits of brightness, and we in fact measured 401 nits of brightness. The gamut is, you can see it all on screen, it's excellent stuff. You've got almost full coverage for the three major color gamuts. x right color calibration is optional, and ours came with that, so you can choose from a diff bunch of different color profiles, DCI P3, Adobe RGB, sRGB, you get the idea. The values on here are pretty good. The calibration is reasonably good. You can always get your own colorimeter if you're a professional and you need to further work on that calibration, but it's quite good, it's quite nice. And I don't see the touch layer adding any unwanted look of graininess or anything like that. And the matte layer on this is pretty subtle too. So it's really quite nice looking and pretty natural thanks to the calibration too. It's not that garish OLED experience. And you wouldn't want that garish OLED experience for something that's designed for potentially professional content creation. And though it's not one of those things that Lenovo touts, it actually does support the ThinkPad pen, which is a Wacom AES pen. Granted, this thing doesn't turn into a tablet, so ergonomically it's not ideal, but it does open flat on the table, so that does make it a bit easier to use to, in case you need to actually use the pen for whatever you're working on. In terms of ports, given the fact that it's pretty thin at 18.4 millimeters, they fit a good number of ports on here, including two Thunderbolt 3 ports. You got two USB-A 3.1 ports, HDMI 2.0, of course, 3.5 millimeter audio, full-size SD card slot, optional smart card reader for business type folks. There's a little proprietary dongle adapter for Ethernet, and you can also, of course, use a USB-A or USB-C Ethernet adapter on this. It has the usual wonderful ThinkPad keyboard. It might be, relatively speaking, on the thinner side, but boy, that keyboard feels good. And I think that's one of the selling points versus, say, a Dell XPS 15 that has the less ergonomic, less tactile feel, shorter travel keyboard. Lovely. And there's no number pad here, so you've got plenty of room to spread out when you're typing. I, I like that. Microsoft Pre Precision Trackpad on board, the usual signature Lenovo ThinkPad pointing device embedded in the keyboard. For security, we have a fingerprint scanner on board and a Windows Hello IR camera is optional and there is a webcam privacy shutter so you can work naked and be safe.
When it comes to RAM and storage on this, you've got two RAM slots. It's DDR4, 2666 megahertz RAM. At, and if, again, if you go with the Xeon, you can use error correcting memory if you want. And there are two M.2 NVMe SSD slots on board. You can configure it with up to two terabytes a piece. And of course, it's upgradable yourself. It's pretty easy to open it up. I'll show you. So you can get to the internals and world's your oyster. It's got Wi Fi 6 AX200 on board for networking. No optional 4G LTE that I have seen for this model. Since it's a ThinkPad, it's pretty darn rugged. It's passed a bunch of mil spec tests for durability. And the build is carbon fiber on the outside, which is what Lenovo has been doing for years now, and a metal inner cage on this. It's pretty rigid. It's pretty strong. I, like I've said in some of my other videos, I have occasionally dropped a ThinkPad, and usually it's the floor that gets dented, not the ThinkPad. It, the carbon fiber on our lid has a carbon fiber weave pattern. This is a cosmetic thing. They're carbon fiber no matter what, but the 4K one comes with that really pretty carbon fiber weave look, which is also kind of subtle at the same time because, you know, ThinkPads are certainly subtle. We have stereo speakers on board, and they're fairly loud, rich, and full. Lenovo has been doing a pretty good job with that with their ThinkPad laptops. So what about heat and noise? Like, can you actually hear the speakers, that sort of thing? It's going to depend on which processor you get and what you're doing with it, obviously. So we have the Intel Xeon, which is one of the more powerful CPU options there, sitting just under the core i9 in terms of performance. And we do have the Quadro T2000, the more powerful of the cards. Again, NVIDIA Turing architecture, the most modern, but it doesn't do the ray tracing and the tensor cores. So you have to look for a bigger laptop with Quadro RTX graphics if you need that in a Quadro sort of laptop. Anyway, it, you'll hear the fan, fan spin up occasionally, even if you're doing light work, I noticed. And this is a mature product, so it's had BIOS updates. It's not loud, it's not screaming, but sometimes it, they will spin up and you're thinking, what exactly might it be doing right now? But not too annoying. If you push it hard, you'll hear it. And nothing egregious, nothing screaming. These are not the kind of fans that you would have in a gaming laptop, nor is the performance level really up there with the most powerful gaming laptops either. So I don't consider it a problem. Carbon fiber chassis don't get typically very hot to the touch. In terms of CPU core temperatures, there's the, the good way to look at this and the less good way of looking at this. It's happy to ramp up those CPU core temperatures all the way up to almost the thermal maximum, which is 100 degrees centigrade, if you're pushing it very hard. If you're doing something like Blender render work or some of the benchmarks that we run repetitively over and over again, it'll go up into the high 90s. On the other hand, they're obviously not overly thermal throttling it. This is life with a thin and light powerful laptop though, so it's nothing unusual but by today's standards. If you wanted to run cooler, get something like a Lenovo ThinkPad P53, which is their thicker mobile workstation, which does go up to NVIDIA Quadro RTX graphics if you need it. Battery is 80 watt hour. That's not changed from the last generation. It has a compact 135 watt charger. Again, battery life is really going to vary depending on which display you get, a full HD versus the 4K versus the brighter 500 nit full HD or the 300 nit, you get the idea. And for a machine that you can push pretty hard doing challenging stuff, yeah. So in our test case, we do it for productivity work and streaming video, not pushing it super hard, brightness set to 150 nits, and then managed seven hours, which is pretty good. And it's running mostly on integrated graphics in that use case scenario. Obviously, if you are doing Blender renders or something in CAD, your battery life is going to be shorter. You're probably going to plug it in for maximum performance anyway. It's very easy to get inside. Just unscrew the Phillips head screws. They are all visible and they're captive screws, so they'll stay in the bottom cover. And then lift up from the back, comes right up. Don't need a guitar pick or anything. And there you've got your metal and carbon fiber beautifulness. And my goodness, a whole lot of ventilation openings right here. So here we have our two fans, and uh, they're not huge, but then again, given the power level of this machine, they're reasonable enough. And our two heat pipes that are shared. These are the two RAM slots right here. So you've got two of those, so you can go up to 64 gigs of RAM if you get two 32 gig modules, two M.2 SSD slots supporting NVMe, and we have a fast Samsung drive in ours that benchmark very well. Our Intel Wi-Fi AX200 card is right over here. And then we've got the 80 watt hour battery taking up all of the room underneath the wrist rest area and the stereo speakers that are down firing flanking it. So there you have it, the second generation of the Lenovo ThinkPad P1 mobile workstation, super thin, super light, the mobile workstation companion to the ThinkPad X1 Extreme for those of you who need Quadro graphics in Intel Xeon CPUs. But like I said, the extra kicker is if you're interested in that 4K OLED display, you get one that is matte here. 
but supports Tatya and the pen as well. Nice! I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and do hit that notification bell.